Attacks on Russian Navy, Ukrainian Army preparing to destroy Crimean Bridge. The Russian Federation's Black Sea Fleet does not dare to sail in the Black Sea and Ukraine has unblocked grain supplies. UK Defence Secretary Grant Shapps has said the situation in the Black Sea is being closely monitored by the navies of other countries, said Ben Hodges, former commander of the US Ground Forces in Europe. The Ukrainians have changed the nature of warfare at sea, at least in an enclosed area like the Black Sea, Hodges said in an interview with Silicon Curtain. The military officer pointed out that unlike traditional Navy combat, the Ukrainian army used new and adapted technologies, sabotage operations and special forces against the Russian Black Sea fleet. The success of the Ukrainian army also points to the lack of readiness and capabilities of the Russian Navy and, according to Hodges, it proved to be no better than the Russian ground forces in the early days of this conflict. Hodges pointed out an important detail. The Ukrainian army is already hitting large logistics ships that the Russians could use for shipping in the Sea of Azov if the Kirsch Bridge is destroyed, and also the dry dock near occupied Sevastopol where the Russians could repair ships. According to Hodges, the retreat of the Russian Black Sea Fleet gives reason to doubt Putin's intention to use nuclear weapons in the event of the loss of annexed Crimea. Russian forces are no longer using the Crimean Bridge, a key supply route to replenish Moscow's stocks of weapons and ammunition in the annexed peninsula and southern Ukraine, according to Kyiv. Ukrainian strikes on the 12-mile-long bridge has disrupted the flow of weapons for Russia's military, but Moscow will likely attempt to restart the supply stream once the bridge is structurally secure, Vasil Malyuk, the head of Ukraine's security service, told. Russia announced that NATO sends military contingent to Armenia and issued stern warning to Yerevan. The situation in relations between Armenia and Russia does not inspire optimism due to the position of the Armenian leadership, which deliberately ruins relations with the Russian Federation. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov stated in an interview with Izvesha, it was subsequently doubled and now troops from Norway, Canada and the United States are being sent there, turning the EU mission into a NATO mission, Lavrov added. Lavrov accused Armenian Prime Minister Nikol Pashinyan of harming bilateral relations. I also spoke with Prime Minister Nikol Pashinyan when I visited Yerevan for various meetings. It seemed to me that he still understands the benefits of continuing alliance relations with Russia and cooperation within the framework of the Collective Security Treaty Organization and the Eurasian Economic Union. But now, both in the Armenian Security Council and in the Parliament, Armenian officials directly say that we need to rely more on the European Union. According to them, CSTO allegedly does not fulfill its obligations to the Republic, Lavrov said. He recalled that the mandate of this mission was fully agreed upon at a ministerial meeting in Yerevan in the autumn of 2021, after which Armenian Prime Minister Nikol Pashinyan declared the lack of consensus and summoned a similar EU 
admission to the country. Russian Foreign Ministry spokesperson Maria Zakharova emphasized that Armenia is gradually turning before the eyes of the world into an instrument for the implementation of extremely dangerous plans of the collective West, which are completely at odds with the fundamental interests of the Armenian people. According to her, the meeting scheduled for April the 5th in the Armenia-US-EU format caused concern in Moscow because they are exclusively anti-Russian. Such meetings cause concern among most countries in the region because they are aimed not at achieving peace between Azerbaijan and Armenia, but at further introducing the West with its extremely destructive approaches into the South Caucasus, creating new dividing lines there, forcing the countries of the region to follow the anti-Russian agenda, destruction of their centuries-old ties with Moscow, weakening the existing mechanisms of regional security and economic cooperation, notes Zakharova.